hello and welcome dear students today we are going to discuss an important topic that is concept of tropical level the main objectives of this lecture are number 1 concept of tropic levels number 2 food chain and food web number 3 autotropic component of producers number 4 heterotropic component or consumers heterotropic components or consumers decomposers and planktons and last biomass transfer efficiency first of all let us discuss the concept of tropic level the term tropic came from the greek trope meaning food a tropic level refers to a level or a position in a food chain a food web or an ecological pyramid occupied by a group of organisms having a similar feeding mode the tropic levels are shown in a series or a succession to represent the flow of food energy and the feeding relationships between them the tropic group is comprised of organisms that feed on the primary producers to obtain nutrition then the succeeding groups are each comprised of group of organisms that feed on the group before them the succession of tropic levels may occur in a one way chain or in more intricate tropic paths called food web a food chain refers to the hierarchy in which organisms in an ecosystem are grouped into tropic or nutritional levels a food web is comprised of many food chains that are linked together most ecosystems have a complex web structure rather than a direct chain of what eats what an ecological pyramid in turn represents the biomass or the energy flow in an ecosystem both food chain and ecological pyramid start at tropic level which is comprised of primary producers now let us discuss different categories of tropic level the tropic levels have two major categories the autotrophs and the heterotrophs the autotrophs are organisms that can produce organic matter from inorganic matter since they can make their own food and do not need to feed on other organisms they are also referred to as the producers of an ecosystem the heterotrophs are organisms that obtain organic matter directly by consumption unlike the autotrophs they do not have the ability to manufacture their food from inorganic sources thus they hunt or gather food from other organisms heterotrophs are therefore referred to as the consumers they may be further grouped into primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers and so on the primary consumers are comprised of the plant eating organisms called herbivores the secondary consumers feed on the primary consumers the tertiary consumers feed on the secondary consumers and so on the final group called reducers feed on dead organic matter they include the detrivores and the decomposers now let's have some concept about food chain and food web food chain is a linear sequence of organisms which starts from producer organisms and ends with decomposer species food web is a connection of multiple food chains food chain follows a single path whereas food web follows multiple paths from the food chain we get to know how organisms are connected with each other food chain and food web 
form an integral part of this ecosystem. In scientific terms, a food chain is a chronological pathway or an order that shows the flow of energy from one organism to the other. In a community which has producers, consumers and decomposers, the energy flows in a specific pathway. Energy is not created or destroyed, but it flows from one level to other through different organisms. There are two basic types of food chains. Number one, the consumer food chain, which includes the sequence of energy flow from producer plus herbivore plus carnivore plus reducer, grass producer, goat primary consumer, man is the secondary consumer. Number second, the detritus food chain passes the consumers going from producer plus reducer. When dead organic matter becomes the starting of a food chain, then it is called the detritus food chain. The decomposers which are the fungi and bacteria feed on the organic matter to meet the energy requirements. The digestive enzymes secreted by the decomposers help in the breakdown of the organic matter into inorganic materials. Then food web, many interconnected food chains make up a food web. When you look at the larger picture, a food web shows a realistic representation of the energy flow through different organisms in an ecosystem. Sometimes a single organism gets eaten by many predators or it eats many other organisms. This is when a food chain does not represent the energy flow in a proper manner because there are many tropic levels that interconnect. This is where a food web comes into place. It shows the interaction between different organisms in an ecosystem. Species are related by their feeding behavior in food chains or food webs. Now some examples of the tropic levels, first that is producers. Tropic level 1 is comprised of primary producers. They are found at the base of an ecological pyramid. A food chain would start as well at tropic level. The tropic level first is occupied by plants and algae. The fundamental feature of organisms in tropic level first is their ability to produce their own food from abiotic materials. Plants, for instance, are able to manufacture their food by photosynthesis. This process can be simplified in this equation. Carbon dioxide plus water makes food that is C6H12O6 plus oxygen and water. It means photosynthesis is a process in which carbon dioxide, water and light energy are utilized to synthesize an energy rich carbohydrate like glucose and to produce oxygen as a byproduct. Structurally, plants and algae have light harvesting cellular structures called chloroplasts. Inside the chloroplasts are photosynthetic pigments that is chlorophyll that can absorb light energy. The primary producers. Primary producers or autotrophs are organisms that produce biomass from inorganic compounds. In general, these are photosynthesizing organisms such as plants or algae which convert energy from the sun using carbon dioxide and water into glucose. This glucose is then stored within the plant as energy and oxygen which is released into the atmosphere. In terrestrial ecosystems, almost all of the primary production comes from vascular plants 
such as trees, ferns and flowering plants. In marine ecosystems, algae and seaweed fill the role of primary production. There are also some deep sea primary producers that perform oxidation of chemical inorganic compounds instead of using photosynthesis. These organisms are called chemoautotrophs. Then in level 2 that is primary consumers. The next tropic level in a food chain or an ecological pyramid is the tropic level. Second, in this level the organisms occupying this level feed on the primary producers and are called primary consumers. Primary consumers are herbivores that is animals that are adapted to consuming and digesting plants and algae that is autotrophs. Herbivores are generally split into two categories. Grazers such as cows, sheep and rabbits whose diets consist of at least 90 percent of grass and browsers such as deer and goats whose diet consists at least 90 percent of tree leaves or twigs. Primary consumers may also consume other forms of plant material. Many bats, birds and monkeys eat fruit, frugivores, birds, insects, bats and arachnids that spiders eat nectar, nectarivores and termites and beetles eat wood that is xylophages. In marine ecosystems, primary consumers are zooplankton, tiny crustaceans which feed off photosynthesizing algae known as phytoplankton. Then we have level third that is secondary consumers. Secondary consumers are comprised of animals that feed on primary consumers. Organisms that eat other animals are called carnivores or predators. Predators occupy the tropic level third of a food chain or an ecological pyramid. Secondary consumers at tropic level third are carnivores and omnivores which obtain at least part of their nutrients from the tissue of herbivores. This includes animals and carnivores, plants that feed on herbivorous insects that is insectivores. Secondary consumers are usually small animals, fish and birds such as frogs, weasels and snakes although larger apex predators such as lions and eagles may consume herbivores and can also exist within the second tropic level of an ecosystem. In marine ecosystems all species that consume zooplankton are secondary consumers. This ranges from jellyfish to small fish such as sardines and larger crustaceans such as crabs and lobsters as well as whales while filter feed and basking sharks. Then tertiary consumers, tertiary consumers acquire energy by eating other carnivores but may be preyed upon. Owls are an example of tertiary consumers although they feed off mice and other herbivores. They also eat secondary consumers such as storts. In turn owls may be hunted by eagles and hawks and are therefore not apex predators. Then apex predators in apex predators these are apex predators are organisms at the top of the food chain and which do not have any natural predators. Eagles, wolves, large cats such as lions, jaguars and cheetahs and marine animals such as sharks, tuna, killer whales and dolphins are all examples of apex predators. Although there are many more apex predators often have specific adaptations which make them highly efficient hunters. Sometimes they work within groups enhancing the success of their hunting abilities. However, 
not all apex predators are vicious hunters. Whales, sharks are large filter feeders consuming only small fish and plankton. Although because they have no natural predators, they are apex predators in their environment. Apex predators play an extremely important role in an ecosystem. Through predation, they control populations of the lower tropic levels. If apex predators are removed from an ecosystem, organisms such as grazing herbivores can overpopulate, therefore placing intense grazing and browsing pressure on the plants within a habitat. If there are fewer available plant resources, other organisms that depend on the plants, although are not hunted by the apex predator, such as insects and small mammals, will suffer population declines and in turn can affect all tropic levels within an ecosystem. This disturbance is called a top-down tropic cascade and can lead to ecosystem collapse. The other tropic levels include the organisms that feeds on a secondary consumer is called a tertiary consumer and the one that eats on a tertiary consumer is referred to as quaternary consumer. The tertiary consumers and the quaternary consumers occupy tropic levels 4 and 5 respectively. Then decomposers that is the last of the tropic level is occupied by decomposers such as detrivores. They feed on dead plant and animal matter. Detrivores are decomposers that specifically fragment to consume their food. And the examples of detrivores are worms, millipedes, dung flies, wood lice and slugs. Other decomposers include fungi and bacteria. They consume nutrients at molecular level as opposed to other consumers that eat their food and digest them. These decomposers rely on readily available nutrients in the simplest form. For example, materials that have been digested or substrates derived from diseased or rotting animals. Parasites that feed on available organic materials but do not necessarily kill the host may also be included in this group. Decomposers occupy the last tropic level or the top of the ecological pyramid. The most common decomposers are fungi. They are the first instigators of decomposition. They have the enzymes and other compounds to break down biomolecules of diseased organism. Bacteria also have enzymes that break down organic compounds into simpler forms. After the decomposition process, the detrivores then act on the remains. Scavenging for detritus or decomposing organic matter. The role of decomposers in the ecosystem is vital as they are the ones that break down the organic matter of dead organisms where a part of them returns to the earth as a geochemical component. Then we have planktons and planktons are microscopic organisms that live on aquatic habitats. Some of them are photosynthetic and others are heterotrophs. Thus, they may be distributed to different tropic levels in the food chain or ecological pyramid. Those that are capable of photosynthesis such as phytoplankton are considered as producers. Heterotrophic planktons such as zooplanktons may be consumers as they feed on other planktons. Now, let us have some concept about the tropic structure. A tropic structure refers to the partitioning of 
biomass between different tropic levels. It is controlled chiefly by the biomass of the primary producers. The primary producers affect the transfer efficiency between tropic levels as they essentially provide the energy and the nutrient inputs. Apart from them, another important factor is the top down component. The latter includes the predators. Their consumption suppresses the lower tropic levels. In a way, the predators help the primary producers by controlling or limiting excessive herbivory by predation. They serve as biological control of the tropic levels. Another way by which the predators are able to promote primary productivity is by intraspecific competition. Both the primary producers and the predators are major factors for regulatory control. As the tropic structures progress to the top, the energy flow is depicted to diminish from the bottom to the top. Now, let us have this concept about biomass transfer efficiency. Biomass in an ecological pyramid is lost progressively from the bottom up. The greatest biomass amount is found at the base tropic level that includes the producers. Since the primary consumers rely on producers for sustenance, the biomass amount of the producers would therefore be limiting factor to the biomass of the primary consumers. Likewise, the secondary consumers rely on primary consumers and consequently their biomass would also be affected with the available biomass amount of primary consumers. Thus, in an ecosystem, it is usual to find a biomass pyramid, wherein the first tropic level is widest while the topmost tropic level is narrowest. The distribution of biomass in an ecosystem implicates ecosystem stability. If in the case of an inverted pyramid, the ecosystem could fail when there are more consumers than primary producers. Now, the significance of tropic level, monitoring the tropic levels is essential so as to gain an understanding of the interrelationships between the organisms as well as the ecological processes that occur within an ecosystem. In that way, the magnitude of herbivory, predation and decomposition processes could be used to know the status and stability of an ecosystem. This was all about today's topic. Hope you have enjoyed it well. Thank you for watching.